Okay, <clears throat> so Sir David Chipperfield, happy birthday to you. Uh, you are 68 uh, years old today. And uh, let's, uh, let's read a little bit about him. First, uh, let's uh, look at, uh, at some uh, pictures of this, uh, of this man who doesn't hide uh, his um, success story, at least in this picture. Why is it that, uh, you know, some very famous people love so much uh, t-shirts, mostly uh, black, you know, uh, to, to, to give the feeling that uh, perhaps, uh, you know, they descended from uh, Mount Olympus uh, uh, to us uh, and uh, to feel more, uh, you know, uh, casual, perhaps. I mean, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg also uh, sports, uh, uh, you know, uh, T-shirts and other people, you know, they, they, they try to look uh, proletarian a little bit, but uh, <laughs> we know they are not. We know who they are. So um, let's move forward. Uh, here is a picture from a lecture, I guess. And... Uh, Another one, like a true European with a scarf around the neck. This is very rarely seen uh, uh, in, in the case of uh, North American architects, for example. But Europeans, if we include Great Britain still in Europe, uh, love uh, scarves, uh, you know, and they, they wear them very, uh, you know, convincingly and gracefully in a way. I try to, to mimic, I'm an European myself, and uh, I have a few scarves, but I'm never, I, I don't have uh, the easiness with which uh, the Western European uh, can, uh, can, uh, can sport a, a scarf. So, Sir David Allen Chipperfield, CBE, RA, RDI, RIBA, God. Born the 18th of December, 1953, he is an English architect. He established David Chipperfield Architects in 1985. His major works include the River and Rowing Museum in Hanley on Thames, Oxfordshire, 1989-1999, the Museum of Modern Literature in Marbach, Germany, the Des Moines, uh, Public Library, Iowa, 2002-2006, the Neues Museum, Berlin, 1997-2009, the Hepworth Wakefield Gallery in Wakefield, UK, 2003-2011, the St. Louis Art Museum in Missouri, 2005-2013, and the Museum Jumex, Jumex in Mexico City, 2009-2003. 13. I don't know if I have any of these works in my presentation. I have many works, but I don't know if I have these. I should have uh, focused on these. Anyway, Rowan Moore, the, the architecture critic of The Guardian of London, described his work as serious, solid, not flamboyant or radical, but comfortable with the history and culture of its setting. I quote from uh, this person, uh, he deals in dignity, in gravitas, in memory, and in art. David Chipperfield Architects is a global architectural practice with offices in London, Berlin, Milan, and Shanghai. Not bad at all. Um, yes, yes, we could say his work is serious, solid, not flamboyant or radical. Although maybe, uh, you know, uh, like, like you could have an excessive minimalism, you could also have a, you know, a, you know, a flamboyant seriousness, perhaps. Uh, I know it's oxymoronic what I'm saying. Completed buildings in the UK, a selection, uh, an incomplete, so an incomplete selection of completed buildings in the UK. The river around, ah, so I have one at least for now, but I guess I have a few more from that uh, celebrated list. River and Rowing Museum and Hanley on Thames, Oxfordshire, uh, in UK, uh, born with, I mean, uh, built between 1989 and 1997. It's a good building, uh, I, uh, I, I do have to say it. 
of course, uh, the functionalist would uh, have something to say about the space underneath here, you know, which maybe some, some, sometimes has to be cleaned up. And who has to do this job uh, is probably a doomed person, or perhaps the word doomed is too strong. But otherwise, the building is good. And he has something Japanese about it. I, I, I don't know why, why actually, but it's, it's a good building. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, let's see again, it's a museum, but uh, a lot of glass, I guess uh, this is mainly for sculpture, at least this, uh, this particular uh, room or space. I, I like the fact that, uh, you know, it has this uh, wooden, uh, you know, uh, covering of this part of the building, which gives it a, a rustic uh, feeling, uh, which you don't, uh, you know, often associate with a, with a museum and maybe a high caliber museum. I don't know. So there is rusticity, but there is also the mundanity of, of this, uh, of these parapets. It is a, it is a fine building and, uh, you know, uh, again, I, I, I like this, uh, uh, you know, touch of, uh, of the rustic within, a, you know, a program which, uh, you know, very rarely addresses it, a museum. Uh, or museums often are, you know, rather egocentric in, uh, you know, rejecting uh, anything uh, that is not so-called cultural. But in this case, uh, we have culture and we have also, it's also a kind of an archetypal architecture, which uh, adds to its uh, qualities, I would say. Now the Gormley, Gormley studio in London for this famous sculptor uh, from 1998 to 2001, here I could have incorporated a presentation of the, of the works of this very important sculptor, contemporary sculptor. Uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, I admire this sculptor very much, but uh, I'm not so sure about his studio. You know, when I compare this studio with a, with a so-called studio that uh, Constantin Brincouche had in Paris, I see two very different uh, artists. Um, I mean, here we are talking about almost, a, you know, uh, the institution, the institution Gormley, you know, it became an industry, like music became an industry and film became an industry and Gormley became an industry. I mean, this kind of building shows that art, when it uh, has success, if by success we mean, you know, receiving applauses and, uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of financial rewards, uh, it becomes an industry. It becomes capitalistically very profitable and uh, the romantic artist lost in, in a little, uh, you know, shack is completely gone. Here we are talking of a factory. It looks like a factory, doesn't it? But the, the sculptor is good. And, the, you know, in the end, this is what matters. He's a good sculptor and a good architect built for him. But in my opinion, we could reflect on the fact that, uh, you know, uh, art became so uh, flamboyant you know, that uh, it, it needs such huge spaces in order to be made. Uh, poor Vincent van Gogh, no, who was uh, living in a little room. And yes, his paintings now uh, command uh, huge uh, prices, but he died uh, without selling anything besides one little painting, but not so little for the equivalent of $5. And uh, yes, we associate him now almost with a kind of like Christ-like figure. Uh, that's uh, Vincent van Gogh. And Vincent van Gogh at this very moment has, I don't know, 15, 20 huge shows all over the United States in the bigger cities in the United States. 
with a new invention, how to, to project large uh, images with his paintings on huge surfaces. Uh, so you enter into the painting, so to speak, as a visitor. So some people make a lot of money using uh, the images of the paintings of the great painter who had to commit suicide because he was even unable to, to buy food for himself. That is, if his brother Theo didn't send him a little bit of money for colors and food. But this is not the case here. Uh, Gormley is an immensely successful sculptor, and you can see he he has a, a factory essentially built for him by Sir David uh, Chipperfield. Look at this, you know, it's it's almost disturbing, actually. You know, there's so much uh, convenience. You know, everything is planned. You know, the light comes from the top, and the space, of course, is huge, and it, it's just. I'm actually, and I don't think I'm envious. I think I am actually sad, you know, because there are these very moments, so many artists in the world, and some of them are perhaps good, and they struggle, they are in the gutter, they have nothing to eat, and it's not that I'm romanticized, but this is the truth. It's hard to make art. And yet, you see, there are other kinds of artists who can build factories for themselves. And uh, a certain architect uh, has them do just that. I, I find it a little bit indecent, to be honest with you. Anyway, but again, I do have to acknowledge he does good work. And uh, in, in the end, or the end of the day, as the saying goes, that's what matters. Perhaps, but I wonder if that's all that matters. Now, BBC Pacific Quay in Glasgow, UK, 2001-2007. Uh, yes, 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 of course. But um, I understood that after the pandemic, we cannot afford any longer this kind of uh, open large spaces that the office has to reconfigure itself. Uh, you know, to to uh, accept uh, smaller uh, smaller spaces. I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a working progress, so to speak. This pandemic, so we don't know what will happen. This is, of course, a, a, a good building, but uh, it is mon monumentalizing what? Perhaps this is the question we have to address. What is it monument monumentalizing? Let's look again at the function of the building. I don't know why. Ah, yeah, it's BBC. Okay, uh, sure. Um, yeah. Oh, again, a, a mega company, a mega sculptor, a mega company, you know, and uh, But it is true, it is a serious architecture, it is well done, it's, it's hard to find, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> problems with it, so to speak, even the section looks uh, impeccable, uh, it's just fine, you know, it, it's, I don't know what else to say, except that perhaps it's just too fine, there is no um, hesitation, there is no, it's, it's like everything is perfect in this world, and this building for BBC has to be perfect too. And it is. And even in the render, you know, look at that light, how it falls on the central atrium. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's hard to be, not to be, not to be envious. It's true. And this, uh, you know, ziggurat, uh, you know, of, of steps and areas of people talking. And it's, it's just beautiful, you know. and. Uh, and you wonder why the anguish of existentialism, is it justified? Perhaps not. If you look at these things, there is no reason to be anguished, to be, you know, to, to, to have angst. 
you have a good job working for BBC in a building by Sir David Chipperfield, what could be better? And you even have the feeling that uh, somehow you, 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 you are connected with a rather heroic architecture that climbs. You know, I mean, this it's almost pyramidal, you know, it refers to a certain tradition of pyramids and uh, you know, you could feel, I, I just read today, of, I mean, I saw a house being published uh, on the Zin, um, uh, a so-called Aztec house built in Japan. And it has some qualities from the outside, you know, it's a small fortress with the huge stones. But when you look inside, you see the same, uh, you know, the template, you know, the same, uh, you know, so-called comfortable living room, rather banal and commercial. So what do the Aztecs have to do with the commercialism of, uh, with the commercialization of comfort, you know, uh, epitomized by uh, our splendid, uh, you know, custom-made uh, kitchen. I always have troubles with chicken and kitchen, uh, but I could differentiate uh, between them with a little bit of thinking, prior thinking. Anyway, sure, it's a good building. Look at this, BBC Scotland. It's a fine building celebrating, well, a good uh, company in, this, in the field of media. Um, anyway, Turner Contemporary in Kent, UK, 2011. Welcome to Chipperfield. You know, uh, splendid whiteness, uh, strong geometry, strong shadows where they are, uh, a little bit predictable, but it's true, it's, it's, it's a skillfully done architecture. Uh, and, and again, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't have uh, Hamletian shadows or dilemmas. No, it's, it's an architecture which is so sure of itself that you almost feel like, uh, like uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm subjective now and probably lamentable. I, 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 I wanted to say like turning your back on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I rather like more this wall here, to be honest with you. Maybe it's my own negativity here. After all, I'm going to start soon a new company uh, <laughs> without any institution and without any money called Anarch. Because I, need, I think we need more Anarchitects than architects. The Hepworth Wakefield, Wakefield West Work, Work, Yorkshire, UK. Wow, what happened here to Sir uh, David uh, Chipperfield? This is uh, a, an unexpected neurosis, at least in plan. Really, I'm very surprised. Uh, it's it's um, something happened. Uh, I, I can't imagine after the buildings that we just saw. Uh, I mean, we just saw, no? Uh, the Luc Scalme Volupte of the BBC building and so on, and look here. What is this? <laughs> I cannot, I can't, I cannot, uh, you know, conceive that Sir David Chipperfield has a dual personality or uh, worse, what is called today a bipolar disorder. Well, I'm beginning to accept uh, the, 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 I mean, towards the outside, the drama is not so obvious because the mono material he uses but the plan uh, that does take me by surprise and did take me by surprise, I confess. Um, beautiful are those trees, the left and right. The building, what can I say? You know, Anthropos conquering the world with concrete and grayness and coldness because it's a cold material. The plan, though, shows, uh, as I said, uh, a certain disarray, an unexpected disarray. But if you ask me, what do I choose between the building and what I see here, the water, the vegetation, I would go wholeheartedly towards the water and the vegetation. I don't think the building matches them in terms of grace, unexpectedness, and beauty. 
and the building is so opaque, you know, blunt walls, you know, they are rather misanthropic, I would say. Okay, the one Pancras Square, London, 2008-2013. Uh, I have seen on an almost identical, in fact, I'm, I'm very puzzled. I have seen a mo more recent, the most recent perhaps, or one of the more recent buildings of Valerio Olgiati, almost identical with this one. But then it's not so difficult to make an almost identical building of this one. Very strange, I, it's like a deja vu. Uh, but it's good, I mean, look how it is built, look at the columns, you know, they are perfectly covered with this you know, texture and, uh, well, what can I say? Perfection is achievable. Although again, I'm confrontational. I would rather, I would rather take this this part of this wall here, which is a, of a building perhaps without glory, but I see more sensitiveness sensitiveness here than here somehow. This is too too sure of itself for myself today in the mood I am in. I'm not saying it's a bad building. It's a good building, but a little bit masculinist, I would say. Look at this. It's too impeccable. This building is certainly not uh, advocating what uh, uh, Lina Bobardi was, you know, the perfection of imperfection. Now, here we have the opposite, the imperfection of perfection. Again, I am not saying it's a, it's a bad building. It's a good building, but uh, uh, is it a temple? No, it's not a temple because in a temple at the center, you know, to the left or to the right is always the god or the goddess. Here we have the toilets at the center. So let's not uh, be, be, you know, uh, delusional here this is not a temple it might look like here look seen from here with its uh, you know uh, impressive columns but uh, when you look at the plan and the banality of the, its core uh, you wouldn't say it's a temple no it's not a temple unless we talk about the temple of uh, capitalism of consumerism of uh, utilitarianism mercantilism and other isms. As you can see, I'm in a bad mood, but I want to remain subjective uh, because I want to express what I feel. And this is what I feel when I look at this building. One Kensington Gardens, London, 2010, 2015, uh, similar to the previous one. I'm sorry, Sir David Chipperfield, but um, you don't surprise us too much. Yeah, yes, or oh, yes, what else can I say? But maybe I should say something else. Uh, the kind of yes I, I, I expressed is perhaps uh, not the best architecture can achieve. Because if I look at this building and I look at these buildings and I look at this building, I actually see an impoverishment and not an enrichment in the good sense of the word. Yes, the, I'm sure the materials are very high class and expensive and all the rest. But uh, I don't want to, you know, play viciously with linguistics, that is with his name, uh, and uh, just spell differently cheaper field. But uh, spiritually and culturally and even tectonically, I think this is actually cheaper than this one and this one. Although I'm sure it's a very expensive building. Anyway, and it is a little bit militaristic, you know, uh, that's what I feel. Valentino, now <laughs> we go to, the, to a different field that is the field of fashion and high fashion for that. And the flagship store, not any kind of store, but the flagship store. Well, 
another temple, isn't it? The temple of fashion. That is the temple of ephemerality. Uh, not to call it differently. I, re I recall and I say it again, I quote again from Oscar Wilde, who has delicious, uh, uh, you know, short, uh, memorable uh, statements that fashion is so ugly that that's why we have to change it every six months. But who cares if we change the fashion every six months since we have such a building which is, uh, you know, uh, beyond the, the capriciousness of fashion, apparently. Because it's still, you know, uh, advocating a rationalism I am tired of. But, but it is misleading because you think, you know, it's, if indeed Baudelaire was right that art has two halves, the ephemeral and the eternal, well, here we have it. The building assumes um, the rationalism of eternity or the eternity of rationalism. And inside we have the fashionable, uh, uh, you know, products of a fashionable uh, fashion, uh, fashion enterprise or designer, Valentino. Why is it that these famous architects build so many flagship uh, stores or other fashion stores? I mentioned Val Valerio Olgiati. He also did a store uh, with, I, I don't know. It's something a little bit, uh, I would say disappointing. David Chipperfield creates Palazzo atmosphere for Valentino store in London. What is that a Palazzo atmosphere? I don't see any palazzo atmosphere here. I'm sorry. I, and I don't know what that means, the palazzo atmosphere. <laughs> I hope you in the audience know what this means. I don't know a palazzo atmosphere. But this is the language of, uh, you know, journalists today. We, we can't take it too seriously. This is what we are supposed to see in a palazzo, you know, uh, shoes like this uh, hanging on the, you know, on the walls, on shelves, of course, probably unbearably expensive, you know, a pair of sandals, probably 2000 uh, euros or something. Completed buildings outside the UK, a selection. An incomplete selection of completed buildings outside the UK, that is outside the United Kingdom. Toyota, <laughs> of course. Only the kings and queens have the chance to be served majestically by a uh, sir architect. Toyota Auto, Kyoto, 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 the most spiritual uh, city in Japan. But uh, forget the temples and the Zen gardens. We are talking now about Toyota. Uh, uh, let me see what's going on here. Uh, Sorry, the resolution of this picture is not great. I almost wish he did this building here, but uh, this is an existing. He did the building behind. It's okay, I guess. Again, you know, it's perhaps not so difficult to do an okay building these days. Now, you know, since we are in Tokyo and since I mentioned the Zen Gardens, why not bring in some, you know, splendor, uh, you know, in this way? you know, water, of course, the serenity of water. So the passing by uh, Toyota car should uh, have a glimpse at what it is not, the car that is. Otherwise, if you look at the building, uh, you wonder, is some kind of a, something in between Fumihiko Maki and Tadao Ando, maybe a little bit, but, um, you know, this kind of statement that I just made is probably irrelevant. Um, yes, we could say, why not? I didn't read anything about the Palazzo atmosphere here. The, I can't pronounce that first word, Figgy, Figgy, uh, Art Museum in Davenport, Iowa, USA. Nice, nice, but... Uh, I wonder about, uh, I mean, Iowa is not uh, truly, you know, uh, from what I know, uh, you know the state, uh, the most cultural, uh, you know, or culture state in the United States. 
And maybe that's the reason why uh, important architects build there and in uh, other places in the Midwest, uh, you know, like in Ohio, uh, we saw a museum uh, futuristic as it was by uh, um, Kopp Himmelblau. And now we look at one by Sir uh, David uh, uh, Chipperfield. It's fine. It's, yeah, it's. Uh, it's almost too fine for the name of the museum because the the, the, theme on, the name of the museum is a little bit uh, a little bit funny, I would say, and a little bit almost frivolous. But the building, as we expect from Sir David Chipperfield, is serious and it has dignity and it has fine details. And uh, forget about the fact that this building needs a lot of air conditioning because no window ever opens. But you know. We can do it. We have the machinery to pump fresh air continuously, nonstop. And it's a big building. It's not a sustainable building, of course, but uh, it was built before the obsession with the sustainability, which we don't take seriously anyway. So, you know, it can be, uh, it can be this way. Interesting this uh, flight of stairs, because usually you have a larger, you know, at the beginning of the stair, uh, you know, you have a wider dimension. Uh, here is the opposite: it's narrow at the beginning and uh, wide at the top. Strange, a little bit strange, I would say, because it's not very welcome. <laughs> You know, in order to be welcoming, uh, it should be the other way, I think. But maybe I have a traditionalist way of thinking. It's possible. Uh, we are going to see something else strange uh, in, in Berlin from Sir uh, David Chipperfield. A nice sketch, of course, and a nice building, of course. But it's so misleading, really, because, you know, I, I, I lived in the United States for a good number of years. I know how it is, you know. Yeah, you know, these monuments dedicated to culture, they are, they are not really part of the preoccupations of, of, of or part of the, of the engine of life of, of a town or a city, you know. They are, they're rather aloof and distant, even if, of course, there is a lot of preoccupation with participation and so on. But, but art is not intrinsically part of, you know, the life of the city or the town is about making money, is, is, is within a context where the saying goes, time is money. So let's not have uh, illusions and delusions. And the museum is, uh, you know, the, the temple of uh, otherness in a way. And so art is considered uh, that which is that which is not us. And, uh, and uh, as such, we need it because if we pay a visit to the museum, we, 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 we feel less sinful being preoccupied most of the days about selling and buying because essentially that's what capitalism is besides production and consumption. We are essentially, uh, you know, a world covered with mer merchants. We sell and we buy. We sell and we buy. It's all about uh, selling and buying. And then art, of course, uh, in order to feel less guilty, just as the bankers are so preoccupied with art, they invest in art. So the capitalist city invests in art too, that is in museums. So we don't have the guilt that, uh, you know, Vincent van Gogh had to shoot, shoot himself because he couldn't live in this world, this world which he actually loved. And his letters, the letters of Vincent van Gogh are a beautiful uh, proof that this artist loved the earth and loved it in a, in, loved it in a, in a, in a modest way in an almost delicate way. Uh, and, and, and yet, anyway, we transformed, as I said, Van Gogh into a big affair, into, I mean, not affair, in a big business. It became, Van Gogh became a huge, a colossal business. As I said, at this very moment in the United States, there are 15 or 
20 mega shows, then you can find news about it uh, on the web with fragments of paintings by Van Gogh or whole paintings are projected on huge surfaces. And of course, you pay a lot of money perhaps to, to, to you know, to benefit from the chains to enter a painting by the, by, the, by the artist who couldn't sell any painting except that one of five for five dollars and who had to commit suicide because he couldn't make a living. This formidable, formidable, one of the most formidable painters. So this is the world we live in. Let's face the truth. So this, this museum actually is lying, you know, showing us this splendid face, you know, uh, smooth and so on. Uh, and we, we, we ignore the fact that maybe inside the spaces, inside this building, there are paintings painted in great anguish by great painters who had nothing to eat. Maybe some of them, not like uh, the sculptor I showed before, but uh, others. You know, it, it, it's a lie often, you know, or, or we take artifacts from uh, Africa or from the indigenous population in New Zealand or from, uh, you know, the native population in the United States whom we placed inside the reservations now and, and, and encourage them to, you know, consume their time and little money in casinos. So they become completely destitute. So we, we use their art in order to escape guilt, to embellish the beautiful walls of our great monuments and temples dedicated to culture. Let's have no illusions about uh, how cultured our world is. Because if you open any news, doesn't matter what country today, what do you learn? About the business transactions, about how much money a certain film made on the, in the, on the box office, uh, it, 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 we reduced even art to an industry and music also an industry. And we saw the factory that uh, celebrated sculptor in England also built for himself. The Museum of Cultures, talking about culture. So uh, not only uh, one culture, but of cultures. So it's a Museum of Cultures, M-U-D-E-C. I could speculate now if I try to pronounce that uh, apparent uh, word made of the initials, M-U-D-E-C, Madek, you know, it makes me think of mud uh, with a pessimist, uh, uh, you know, disposition I have now. I, you know, I am tired actually of these buildings dedicated to culture, 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 but they are, look at it, it's not, it's not open, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a storage space, a large storage space, more or less, uh, you know, interesting, uh, uh, aesthetically speaking, but it's opaque, it's misanthropic, actually, yeah, you know, look at these beautiful translucent walls, you know, curved as they are, misleading again, it's a lie, it's a lie, what I, what I look at here, it's a lie. It's all a lie. Life is not like this and true art is not like this too. And then to tell me that this space is made for, uh, for God, that it's actually a sacred space because it's dedicated to cultures. What cultures? We live in a world obsessed by money, okay? Let's not have illusions, you know, cultures. We know very well people don't read any longer books and certainly not good books. Uh, maybe some intellectuals, uh, you know, somewhere, but uh, outside of the general life, as, as it is, and I don't know, I, I don't know, yes, the sketch is okay, but this kind of sketch can be done by many people whose names do not start with Sir, S-I-R. Yes, 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 of course, it can be done in this way or in some other way, but... Uh, a public library, of course, culture, library, office buildings, Iowa again. <laughs> wow. Wow. It almost looks like uh, the Louvre by uh, Sana, by uh, Kazuyo Sejima and her partner. 
uh, it's not bad. I, I, I mean, really, it's elegant. It's uh, exquisite and it's esoteric almost. You know, it's, uh, yeah, if you look at the building from here, you see it has a certain, uh, uh, you know, irregularity in plan. But uh, if you look here, you say, this would have made even Miss Van der Rohe tremble with envy. Yeah. Yeah, but you look at the buildings around the glorious library and uh, what do you see, you know, the spaces of, uh, you know, production and speculative uh, transactions, uh, very banal actually, and they go all the way to the horizon. And the, and, and the, and the library is, uh, is, you would say is the fortress of learning, right? It's. Uh, it's so opaque, actually. Yes, I know from the outside, you, you can see towards the outside, but from the inside, but from the outside, you cannot see inside. That this could also make us think a little bit, you know, about what Stephen Hall said about the X of the in. But what about the in of the X? And of course, a very special panel, a sandwich panel was created for this library. So you see, <laughs> it, it's unbelievable actually. It uh, actually makes me smile and it also makes me sad. Uh, because it's known that the, the sunlight doesn't have a good effect on, on, on books or on paper. So uh, he created, they created this uh, sandwich panel, which, uh, you know, uh, enters conveniently the light in the building and uh, you cannot see what's going on inside, but from the inside, you can see what is going, going on outside. So, you know, these arrows of desire are uh, actually, you know, approximately correct. A look at it. The summers, but, but I'm happy that he considered the, you know, the trajectory of the sun, the apparent trajectory of the sun on the sky, because let's not forget, that is an illusion, another illusion. It's not the sun that moves around us, but we move around the sun. By the way, the winter sun, the winter solstice is uh, very soon here on the 21st of December. Uh, and since then, the day begins to grow slowly. Uh, on the winter solstice, we have the biggest night, the longest night, and the shortest day. And after the 21st of December this year, the day slowly will grow. And that's why Christmas was moved from January to December, to be close to the symbolism of the slow growing of the day. Symbolically, it is correct. The birth of Christ coincides with the birth of the day or of the light. It is an ingenious creation, this panel, of course, and it's elegantly uh, executed and so on. But uh, we saw the picture at the beginning, uh, you know, it's still a building you cannot see through from the outside. You can only see the outside through from the inside. And there's something about it that uh, disturbs me, despite its elegance. And it is elegant, I, I, I agree. But, but again, in, in essence, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, an elegantly misanthropic building. Because, you know, if we interpret it as somehow being an architectonic commentary on the sacrality of culture, that is, you know, if we assume that insight is about that, that's what books are supposed to be, you know, about culture. But we know very well how many books are being published and how many of them are truly about culture. And uh, I, I know how the libraries are in the United States where you can find on the same shelf, 
you know, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche or Hegel or Socrates, and then some very banal building, uh, books uh, published uh, for monetary re reasons, essentially, uh, all over. So there is a lot of confusion, actually, you know. Erasmus of Rotterdam said, you know, doesn't matter how many books you read, it matters what, what books you read, you know, they can be very, you know, just uh, limited in number, a few good books. But today we have a plethora of books, I mean, millions and millions and billions of books being published. So these uh, temples of culture or learning are actually sending uh, the wrong message to the world because, because there is nothing really sacred inside, you know, it's... Uh, they are containers of, uh, of, uh, of, of confusion in a way. Anyway, obviously, I'm in a bad mood. Bad mood today. I, I should, uh, I should, uh, I should, uh, you know, be careful about continuing to make presentations with such a mood. The Museum of Modern Literature in Germany, 2002-2006. Another museum by Sir David Chipperfield. Um, yes. Yes. Let's read again. Is it the Museum of Modern Literature? Yes. 2002-2006. I don't know what to say about it, really. I mean, it's another museum. You know, too many museums in this world. Really, too many. I mean, you know, we, we have libraries for books, right? Why do we need a museum for books? Ah, yes, to show maybe some artifacts or who know, the, the pen that the great writer worked with or his typewriter, old patient as it is, or I don't know, I don't know. But there is so much money in the world that of course we are supposed to build some things and cover as soon as possible the earth with as many buildings as possible, of course. Of course, we, we, we have to, it's a must. I really think the whole humanity suffers of what is called uh, horror vacui. We, are, we have horror of leaving an empty spot on this earth. So we have to as quickly as possible cover everything with asphalt, with cement, with concrete, with steel, with glass, the more the better. It's, I don't know. Yes, it has the so-called dignity, but it's a dignity which is a little bit uh, almost frightening, you know, in its regular regularity and its uh, rhythmic, um, you know, perfection. I almost like more this banal building here. This is uh, this is uh, dwarfing me. It's not. Uh, it's not inviting me. Yes, it may, reminds me a little bit of the crematorium uh, built by uh, Gunnar Asplund in Stockholm. Now, maybe that's what he wanted to to evoke the feeling or the thought that uh, indeed uh, a museum is some kind of a crematorium. America's Cup building in Valencia, Spain. <laughs> Uh, what am I reading here? Let, I am a little bit stunned. America's Cup building in Valencia, Spain. Okay, uh, 2005, 2006. Uh, now, I don't know. I mean, first, what is the America's Cup? And what is it doing here in Valencia, Spain? And what is Luis Vuitton doing here? Uh, I don't know. I mean, yes, yeah, why not? It could be uh, this way or it could be in many other ways. Oh, it is yellow now. Now, this really took me by surprise. I didn't expect this. I don't know how this yellowness was achieved. Perhaps because of, uh, of some lighting, because I, yeah, I, don't, I don't see, I don't know. Uh, yes, it's interesting, this metamorphosis from whiteness to yellowness. I, I, I would agree. Um, America's Cup. I, I really don't know what it refers to. 
uh, again, we don't see any opening window here, and why should we open the windows, right? When, again, we have pumping fresh air coming from all over in the building. Who cares it costs money and we pollute? Nobody. America's Cup. What could this be? I don't know. I have to, I have to, I have to check it out. I'm curious. America's Cup. A culture museum again in China, 2007. I'm not attempting, even attempting to read those names. Liang Zhu, Huang Zhu, James Young. I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, What do you see here? Blank walls, walls, the museum of walls in a way, and doors which penetrate the walls. Otherwise, what do we see? Walls, walls, and walls again. And fortunately, a few beautiful trees. So is Sir David Chipperfield telling us that Actually, culture is uh, is the other par, par excellence. It seems so. No, uh, culture is to be protected from the invasion of vulgarity and frivolousness from the outside. So there are these huge storage spaces covered with precious stone, which protect the fineness of the spirit of culture. I guess, you know. Something like this, I think it can be, can be, could be the, the, the meaning of, uh, of uh, uh, culture or the museum of culture. Uh, ah. <laughs> and the arrows, uh, you know, like uh, spermatozoids, uh, you know, they uh, flow through the space, uh, you know, everything is so carefully, uh, crafted, you know, the, 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 the fluidity of the circulation. So, you know, you enter through here, you go like this, like this. Uh, of course, you have to see everything. So then you turn left, then you turn right, <clears throat> then again right, and then left, and then again right, because you want to see everything. And then left, 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 left again, uh, with a little detour, left again, and left again, and then uh, you turn around and you are approaching the end of the trip in the labyrinth of culture. And here it is, the arrow showing you logically and fluently how to exit the great temple ded dedicated to culture. Ah. Uh, Oh, very well what's written here. Here I see me, man, no, but what is here? Anyway, are they toilets or something? Uh, I, I don't know. They are the only words written here. Here I can't read very well what is. It doesn't matter. And the clouds, Le Merveilleux Nuage, as uh, Charles Baudelaire would say in his beautiful uh, uh, poem uh, in prose, uh, L'Etranger, move above the temple of culture and the trees are magnificent and the water is magnificent. But I'm not very sure that this building is really uh, bringing something very significant to the beauty of the landscape. It's an okay building. No, it's not. When I look at this, I don't really think this is okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, um, and I don't even know where this is because I looked at the plan. Maybe this is a different building. It probably is, and I, I apologize. I don't know what this is doing here, but it is in China and it, it, it might be uh, done by uh, Sir um, David uh, Chipperfield, but it's not the same building, is it? Or some courtyard there, or maybe there are more buildings. Sorry, I, I, I don't know enough about it, I promise. By next year, on the 18th of December, I will uh, 
uh, I will uh, check the truth about, investigate the truth about this project. The Empire Riverside Hotel in St. Pauli, Hamburg, in Hamburg, Germany. Hamburg, a proud city which afforded the, afford some um, uh, great architects to build there, like Herzog and the Moron and so on. Um, well, sure, sure. The power of money, the power of uh, financial transactions, I imagine. No, it's a hotel, but it's still about uh, financial transactions. Again, plenty of beautiful uh, windows that open joyously towards the city. No need for uh, pumping uh, artificially air into the building, of course. Sorry for being sarcastic. It's a good building. And now we arrive, it might be that this is the last one I show in this imperfect presentation and rather malicious today. Sorry for my subjectivity. The Neues Museum, the Museum Island, another museum and another island of culture in Berlin, 1997-2009. Uh, yeah, like the BBC headquarters, we have the center of the space populated with some drama, you know, uh, inspired by, uh, you know, pyramidal um, climbings. It's fine, I guess. The walls are preserved as they were, and he just added uh, this uh, core. Uh, and uh, here I imagine he, he had interventions too. No, he, he is a skillful architect, of course, but uh, uh, so we look here at the disasters of war, if we are to remember the great series of. Uh, uh, graphic works by uh, Goya. And here we see the triumph of reason and money and uh, so on. I don't know. Let's not forget the humans did this. And uh, yes, we are capable of building like this. We are also capable of doing this. We are capable of both periodically. So this was a large existing building where he made interventions and uh, yeah. Are we learning? I don't know. Maybe Rem Kolhas was right. Humans do not learn. The city of justice, Barcelona. Wow, what an ambitious wording, the city of justice. Well, we know very well the struggles of uh, the Catalans to uh, assert the, you know, uh, national pride uh, in their desire to separate from uh, Madrid and from Spain, and they were not allowed to. So I don't know. I don't know about that city of justice. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, this is uh, actually a building that I would rather or a you know, all these buildings were done by uh, uh, God, you know, indeed it's the city of, but I will stop. I will not pronounce the word justice. Uh, sorry, I, 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 I look at these buildings. One, two, three, four. This one too, perhaps five, six, maybe there is a seventh one there. All this is dedicated to the industry of, again, I hesitate to use the word, because what essentially these are, uh, the old Le Palais de Justice, you know, the, the court, the, 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 the architecture of, uh, you know, tribunals and courts. And if I look at these buildings, to be honest with you, I am rather frightened, afraid. I don't know if I would enter any of these buildings with the hope of having a just, resolution to my case, whatever that my case is, that case might be. I am really afraid of what might happen here. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's very strange. I almost feel like calling it the city of injustice. And look at it in plan. It's, 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 it's massive. It's big. It's, I mean, Paris built uh, thanks to the services of uh, Renzo Piano, another 
monumental building for, uh, you know, Le Palais de Justice, uh, truly frightening because of its scale. Again, this is another industrial enterprise, just like film became or music became and so-called justice became an industry too. The one in Paris, I don't know how many thousands of lawyers every day enter that building. Here, you can imagine something similar. You know, I mean, it's an industry. I, I, I would rather call it the, the industry of injustice. Uh, of course, I could be harsh, but uh, this, these elevations of these buildings, uh, 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 you know, make me uneasy. And the bureaucracy of justice is, is just, is just uh, you know, dwarfing. I much prefer uh, the, you know, the similar buildings for the same program built by Sir Richard Rogers. Yes, those are much more interesting and engaging. And there I have a feeling that perhaps, hopefully, justice is served. But here, the bureaucracy of uh, the bureaucratization of justice frightens me. These buildings are uh, uh, monuments to bureaucracy. I, I don't like them. Now, 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 now. St. Louis Art Museum, but didn't I see this one? Didn't we see this one? No, we didn't see this one. And I was wrong. Uh, I saw the, uh, the presentation was ending, but I still have a few more images. St. Louis, the crime capital of the United States has an art museum uh, uh, too, you know, and uh, yeah, the Pritzker Foundation is there too, built by Tadao Anto in the crime capital of the United States, St. Louis. There is also the great arch built by Iro Sarinan, again, in the crime capital of the United States. Although when, when Sarinan built his arch, at that time, perhaps St. Louis was not the crime capital of the United States, but now it is, or it was for a few years in a row. Well, if you look at this image, you wouldn't have any kind of thought of crime. You know, it's a beautiful landscape, well taken care of, and uh, with an elegant, dignified building, um, with a great artwork, perhaps by Peter Smithson. Maybe I'm talking about the land art brought inside the museum. Uh, what can we say? If you look at this building, in any way, you would not think that it is in a city that was several years in a row, the crime capital of the United States. What crime? This is a very civilized city with exquisite taste, with a love for avant-garde art, uh, with reverence for stones, uh, Robert Smithson. Uh, no, no, uh, this is a city where no gun exists, you would think, but you think wrongly. And look at this, you know, what guns, what killings, what crimes, there is no such thing. This is just culture and art and peacefulness and harmony, Eden on earth. Yes, Eden on earth. Museo Jumex in Mexico, another museum. Uh, what can we say? Sure, it can be in this way or it can be another in another way. Uh, Mexico is uh, Mexico is uh, wise that it, it employs the services of important architects, and thus. Um, you know, several places in uh, several cities in, in Mexico uh, are uh, great uh, so-called cultural destinations or tourist uh, touristic destinations. Now we have a look at the building by uh, uh, Sir David Chipperfield. We have other buildings by other architects built uh, not just in Mexico City, but other cities as well, like Guadalajara and others, Carmen Pinos, uh, Tadawando, others. It's an active country and it knows the value of, uh, you know, we have to call it uh, good architecture, I guess. Although it is, it is this one too, opaque and heavy, 
and uh, you know uh, a little bit uh, disturbingly or maybe more than a little bit disturbingly um, you know uh, regular you know box like yes he opened here but if you make abstraction of these two large openings what do you see it's a bunker that's what it is a bunker is a uh, is a uh, uh, and these are aggressive, you know, aggressive and regular, and repetitive. Now that, to in my opinion, art is should be something else, not so mili militaristically, uh, uh, you know, uh, asking for a scientifically scientifically distributed light that comes uh, in a divine way to to reach the the, the canvases of the suicidal painter no this one is not his work i don't know who did this but uh, it's hard not to notice it uh, anyway another valentino flagship i think we saw it no it's another one could it be um you cannot breathe in this store you cannot enter unless you don't have to work that is, you are financially independent. And then, of course, you can contemplate the great culture, the great artwork made uh, with, uh, with bags, with bags. One bag, you can imagine. You, in some parts of the world, you can buy a car with how much you would have to pay for a bag. Not that I'm advising you to buy a car, but um, you know, to understand the, 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 the price, of those items on the shelf. This is another Palazzo atmosphere, maybe even more so. Uh, depressing, actually, <clears throat> it is depressing and, uh, and decent, I would say, really. This uh, sacralization of fashion turns me off. And here they are, look at them, at such a building, such, you know, these are almost like in that video by, uh, you know, breaking the world by uh, Pink Floyd, you know, these people uh, moving like the children in that video towards their final destination where they are processed into, into uh, I hate, hesitate to use the word, into meat. Valentino, look at this, you know, it's not Pala Satena, it's Valentino. And I, I, I always wonder how do these high-end uh, uh, you know, designers make their money. I mean, you know, I never saw or very rare, very, very, very rarely someone wearing something, uh, you know, I mean, he's not so extravagant, Valentino, others are. But really, it, it must be a very, a very lucrative business, you know, fashion design, uh, since, since they can afford such sumptuous, you know, uh, solemn, spaces in new york city where you know a square inch costs a lot uh, wetland uh, we are approaching the end i think uh, two more works i will show the wetland estate in china and here fortunately china is uh, is very inspired and inspiring because china uses a lot of water around buildings and look at this it is, you know, and doesn't matter how morose and gray and cubicle the buildings are, thanks to the water and the gracefulness of the, of, of the trees and the bushes, it's uh, acceptable, maybe even more a little bit than acceptable. But no, 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 no more, because the buildings really, I think, are very indifferent about the gentleness of nature and the gentleness of, of, of water uh, in this case. It's, uh, no, no, the, this building is not saying hello to the bushes and the trees, it's not. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, aloof. It's aloof, it's cold and aloof. I'm sorry, sir, uh, David Chipperfield, but today I'm really in a bad mood and I think it is, it was shown copiously. And look at the plan. Uh, I almost like this frivolousness here. I don't know what this is, but when I see this, 
you know, I almost see, a, I don't know, again, it's something militaristic. It's something, I don't know, like troops are advancing, uh, you know, towards uh, some, uh, some uh, you know, conflict somewhere with, uh, where they have to meet the enemy. It, it, no, no, there is no joie de vivre here, I'm sorry. It's not, and these are, you can imagine, this is one single house, God. You know, I, I mean, it's 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 certainly not for for proletarians. It's certainly not for those people, you know, members of the Rouge Army of the Red Army uh, now who remained, uh, you know, uh, on the fringe, so to speak. This is huge. It's a huge house, and it's it's aloof. It's sadly alone, actually. I don't like. It. And this lady is immensely bored here. I mean, she contemplates the infinite, but I think she's immensely bored. She can't wait for her husband to come from work and uh, maybe watch TV. What else to be done? Uh, do we need more buildings like this in the world? I'm not sure. James Simon Gallery, Berlin. Is this one, the red one here, and uh, it's the typical David Chipperfield. Uh, and I will uh, have one last comment here, uh, not very uh, you know, positive either, but uh, let's look at the, well, you know, let's, let's look at the build. But uh, now we still have the, the plans. Ah, too many taken from Arch daily, and they are very generous of showing uh, lots of drawings and plans and sections and everything, uh, everything uh, a little bit pale graphically, as you can see, but um, we want pictures. So the old building on the left, David, uh, sir, sorry, sorry, God. Well, you know, I, I should never forget the Sir, Sir David Chipperfield on the right. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost okay, but, but it, what is not okay, I think, is uh, this part, the bottom of this building, because there is water here, and uh, I hope I have an image. Let me, let me anticipate a little bit. Yeah. Do you see here? So, you know, this is very blank, it's very blunt, it's very uncommunicative with the water. You know, it's very against Lao Tzu, who, who, who sang beautifully the great mystic of China, the, 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 the power of the weak water. Although water is only apparently weak because the water can erode the strongest rock. This wall here shows total disregard for the vicinity of water. I find it unbelievable, actually. Is this an art gallery? I mean, how could he, how could he distance the plus, you know, the, I mean, I don't even know if, I don't even know what this is, what kind of an art gallery, because it looks huge. It's more like a museum. But it's so monumental and so removed from, from, from the, the vicinity of water, from the, how could you do this, you know? How could you build this wall and not, not open a little bit, you know, so, so the passerby, the visitor of the gallery or whatever it is, can, can contemplate, yes, the, 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 the beauty of water. I, I don't understand. Yes, it's nice, the reflection of what we see here because of the fragmentations, but this wall is not, is not allowing you to, to, to see anything of this. Of course, from here, you wouldn't see it. You would see it only from the outside, from the other side. I like more the reflection and more the reflection of the old building actually than this. This is very, in my opinion, sorry, Sir uh, David Chipperfield, very insensitive because it's huge. I, I hope I have a more adequate image. Here is not so disturbing because you have these, uh, you know, columns and, but here the, the disturbing thing is on that side. And I really hope 
I have, uh, let me see, because, well, the inside is, but um, that's because the art is not yet here. When the so-called crazy paintings will show up, uh, yeah, the worlds become animated, of course, but without that uh, so-called uh, craziness of art, the worlds are uh, deadly, uh, you know, uh, manifesting uh, their desire to, to uh, dwarf us. Yes, from here you can see the water from the superior level, but uh, there are significant meters underneath where exactly at the proximity of water, he opposes a blank and a blunt world. And that I think is not right. In my opinion, it's a mistake. Uh, if you are a sensitive architect, you don't do this sort of thing. Uh, you see a glimpse here of uh, it's massive, you know, it's, it, again, I don't think you can do something like this in the proximity of water. I, I don't find it appropriate at all. Otherwise, the architecture is the same kind of architecture we can expect from Sir uh, David uh, Chipperfield regular imposing uh, the, you know so-called uh, serious and correct and regular but cold and uh, with a rhythmicity which makes me think a little bit of uh, military military affairs fortunately yes we have people here you know with the you know uh, unplanned uh, uh, in, in uh, you know uh, counters and uh, so this, uh, the disorder of life finally is uh, is present but that's not because of the building but it's because of these people who probably exited the building to uh, feel more alive maybe he wanted this kind of contrast but again, the, the lack of a dialogue between the bottom of the, the massive bottom of this building and water, in my opinion, is very, 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 very problematic. The James Simon Gallery, the name is not German, but uh, I don't know. It's, can you imagine? I don't know who this James, James Simon was or is. But this is like a huge uh, museum in the center of Berlin. It's incredible. This is the war. This is the criminal war. Sorry, Sir David Chipperfield, but I think this war is criminal. Yes, it's criminal towards the water. It's criminal to the nor towards the normal tendency that any normal human being has to have some affection for a or some piece of water. No, the word piece is not appropriate. You understand? Towards water, this, this opacity is, is, is almost unacceptable. It infuriates me. You know, it's, it's so unacceptably turning its back on, on, on the water. And not to mention also what is across the water, the life of the city and so on. It's just I don't know what's going on here. Here are the art galleries. The so art is not turning its back on the river or the sky or the street or the city. Good art never does that. And a good museum should not do that either, especially if within the museum, we are supposed to house an art which is sensitively having a dialogue, a necessary dialogue with what is outside of, of the museum, the city, the river, the street, the people, and so on. This is unacceptable. Sorry for being so blunt myself in my statement, but I consider it unacceptable. Happy birthday to you, sir, David Chipperfield. 